on the 29th of May, hearing the presentation of prosecution evidence. In considering the appropriate pace of proceedings during the early stage of the trial, the Chamber determined that certain non-sitting weeks should be included in the schedule to provide the parties with additional preparation time. Therefore, the Chamber ordered that the weeks of the 21st of May, the 13th of July and the 13th of August would be non-sitting weeks. In so ordering, the Chamber also took into consideration that the Tribunal's summary says is from the 23rd of July until the 10th of August, and that there will be no court proceedings during the recess. The Chamber informed the parties that it would be in a position to reassess the trial schedule if necessary with the parties' inputs prior to the summer recess and make any further modifications to the trial schedule at that time. The Chamber granted the defence request for morning court sessions to the extent the registry is able to accommodate this request and also urged the registry to do its utmost to meet the request. Additionally, in consideration of the two-week extension granted to the prosecution, the Chamber adjusted the deadline for the filing of the defence pretrial brief, which was previously set to the 2nd of March, to the 16th of March 2012. Finally, at the 19th of January 2012 status conference, the Chamber scheduled an additional status conference for the 7th of March. In the scheduling order, this status conference was cancelled and the Chamber scheduled a Rule 65 term meeting for the 26th of March and a status conference for the 29th of March 2012. And this concludes the Chamber's summary of the 15th of February scheduling order. On the 17th of February, the prosecution filed a submission in relation to the proposed expert statement of witness Teufika Ibrahim Efendic. This filing will be further discussed later in this status conference. On that same day, the 17th of February, the prosecution filed its first Rule 92 bis and Rule 92 quarter motions. At the 10th of November 2011 status conference, the Chamber announced its guidance for the parties on the Rule 92 bis motions. In that guidance, the Chamber instructed the parties that any Rule 92 bis motion, and I quote, should take the normal form of an ICTY witness statement, end of quote. Further, the Chamber also instructed the parties that if they seek to tender under Rule 92 bis the transcript of testimony in another case, that they should present compelling reasons for the necessity of receiving that evidence in the form of a 92 bis transcript. 
Mr. Groom, the Rule 92 Peace motion, which was filed on the 17th of February, does not take the normal form of an ICTY witness statement. In fact, it resembles very much a transcript of prior testimony with a witness statement cover sheet attached. Further, in that same guidance, the parties were instructed that 92 BIS motions should not, as a general rule, encompass any associated exhibits, but may do so exceptionally, provided that the witness, in his statement, clearly addresses each document and discusses its content. Additionally, even if an exception is made, the number of associated exhibits for any Rule 92 Beast witness should not exceed five documents. And if a party wishes to exceptionally exceed this number, it should include a justification for this in the Rule 92 Beast motion. The prosecution's Rule 92 Bis motion lists 55 associated exhibits with an additional 17 which are struck through. But, nevertheless, these 17 struck through for unknown reasons included in the associated exhibit list. The Chamber notes that the prosecution has stated that some of the 55 exhibits may not be necessary in light of the Chamber's upcoming adjudicated facts decision. Finally, the Chamber also notes that the conclusion, paragraph 38, of the Prosecution's Rule Not to Bis Motion requests, and again I quote, that the prior testimony of the deceased and all of the exhibits referenced therein be admitted into evidence pursuant to Rule 92 Quarter. And I emphasize that this is in a Rule 92 Beast motion. <coughs> Mr. Groom, the Chamber finds this motion to be incredibly difficult to comprehend and further finds that it does not comport with the chamber guidance, Chamber's guidance on Rule 92 Beast motions. Therefore, you are instructed to refile this Rule 92 Beast motion by the 2nd of March. The amended filing should contain a witness statement which takes the normal form of an ICTY witness statement, should not contain portions of transcripts copy and pasted into the statement, and should be limited to five associated exhibits or include a justification as to why it is necessary to exceptionally exceed this number. And verify that the witness addresses the content of each document in his statement that you still seek to tender through him. Regarding the prosecution's Rule 92 Quarter motion, the prosecution has submitted the witness's prior testimony in its entirety and annotated those portions upon which it will rely. The relied upon portion is approximately 12% of the entire testimony. Further, in paragraph 26 of the motion, the prosecution has proposed a procedure for the tendering of transcripts of prior testimony and Rule 92 Quarter motions. In this regard, the Chamber considers that the tendering parties, party should only tender for admission those excerpts of a transcript 
upon which it is relying, including any portions necessary to contextualize or clarify the relied upon excerpts. Mr. Groom, for the prosecution's first Rule 92 Quarter motion, the Chamber will not require the prosecution to refile the motion. However, the Chamber will only consider for admission the annotated parts of the transcript. In this respect, the Chamber requests that you carefully review the transcript to ensure that unannotated portions are not also necessary for the Chamber's evaluation and understanding of the annotated portions. Should the prosecution determine that additional portions do need to be included, it should file a supplement to the original filing identifying those additional portions and please do so uh, within seven days. Uh, of course, uh, and I'm addressing you Mr. Lukic, uh, if the defence in response to a Rule 92 quarter motion, which is redacted, that is, uh, would uh, feel that there's a need uh, for other portions to be admitted as well, although not selected by the prosecution. Of course, you could indicate this in a response that you'd like to have added, added other portions uh, of the Rule 92 quarter uh, um, transcript or statement. Thank you, Ryan. Now, for future motions, the prosecution should not tender entire transcripts of prior testimony, but only tender those portions upon which it will rely. Finally, at the 20th of February Rule 65 term meeting, the prosecution proposed presenting its Rule 92 bis, 92 ter, and 92 quarter motions in the order of its case, provided that the prosecution adheres to the Chamber's guidance on Rule 92 bis, Rule 92 ter, and Rule 92 quarter motions. The Chamber sees no problem with this and leaves the matter to the prosecution. Are there any questions or comments in relation to what I just said? Yes, Your Honor. From the prosecution's point of view, it is difficult to make a selection of the exhibits that we would tender absent the adjudicated facts decision. Can I inquire as when we might expect such a decision? Um, somewhere in my script it reads that it is in the near future and that's not going to help you a lot uh, Mr. Groom is it? Well it is somewhat helpful Your Honor it would also be helpful if we knew uh, if there's a particular portion the Chamber had said in the past that it might separate its decision into separate parts and if we knew what particular part of the, the, the case the Chamber was going to address first, we could focus on the witnesses related to that part of the case. Yes. Now, um, I could give you the numbers, but I have to uh, first... Uh, Mr. Groom, um, 